What's happening folks? Aruj again, and today we're talking about mutations. We just finished talking about protein synthesis, or how does the sequence of DNA lead to an actual protein. Today we're going to talk about what happens if that sequence of DNA is changed or altered. So, first the definition of a mutation is any change in the DNA sequence. So remember there was different combinations of adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. If there's a change in that combination at any point, that would be a mutation. What causes mutations? Um, it's common for mutations to occur during replication because it's actively dividing, during transcription, cell division, and there's a lot of factors. There's environmental fa factors um, that could cause uh, mutations, such as chemicals, um, sunlight could cause skin, skin damage or uh, mutations in, in your skin cells, and things like that. An important fact is mutations in gametes are passed on to offspring. So if there's a mutation in a sex cell, sperm or egg, those will be inherited uh, by the new offspring. Sometimes the uh, mutation can be neutral, it can have no effect, but a lot of the time it's deleterious. What that means, that word deleterious means that it's harmful. So a lot of the times the mutations can be harmful. Um, sometimes the embryo may not survive, that's if um, it's in a protein that's very, very essential or that's needed for the um, embryo's growth and development. If that is mutated, then it, the embryo may not survive. Um, sometimes it can result in new traits or new variations. This is an important concept. Um, for example, blue eyes. Blue eyes was a mutation and that increased uh, variation. It increased eye color in a population. And other times the mutation can be beneficial. What that word in biology means, beneficial, if it helps an organism survive and reproduce, if it helps them survive their, in, uh, their environment and have offspring, we call that something that's beneficial. Now, what about mutations in somatic cells? So remember, somatic cells are body cells. Those are not passed on to offspring, but those mutations are passed on to daughter cells of that somatic cell. Um, a lot of times, uh, that cell could lose its, fun its function, so for example, if we're talking about stomach cells, a job of stomach cells is to secrete stomach acid to help soften up your food and uh, free up minerals. However, if there's a mutation in that stomach cell, it could lose its ability to secrete stomach acid. Again, daughter cells from a mutated uh, somatic cell will have that same mutation. And a lot of scientists actually believe that the reason why we age one reason why we age is we get a buildup of mutations and our, a lot of our cells um, lose their function and then that leads to a lot of the tissues to lose their function, which ultimately leads to organs to lose uh, their function, okay? And uh, mutations in genes that control cell division, growth in cell division, that's what leads to cancer because cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. Now let's get into the different types of mutations. The first category that I want to go over are called point mutations. What a point mutation is, it's the change in a single base. Okay, Remember how there's adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine? It's one of those is altered. And there's three things that could happen. We could have a silent mutation where nothing happens. We could have a missense mutation where the protein changes. Or we could have nonsense where the protein stops early. The protein never finishes being made. Now let me make one clear distinction. Remember how we have DNA, we have RNA, and then we have our protein. Well, when I say the word point mutation, a point mutation is describing what happens at the DNA level. When I say the word silent, missense, or nonsense, those three words are describing the effect that this mutation had on the protein. Okay, so the point mutation describes the DNA. These three words describe the actual protein, the effect that it had on there. Okay, now as an example, as an analogy, I'm not going to show you guys bases or sequences of DNA yet. I'm going to use this sentence. The fat cat ate the rat. Now I remember, remember, Ribosomes read every three letters in DNA, or I'm sorry, in, in RNA. They read the codons, the triplets. So I chose a sentence that has three-letter words, and we'll see how 
a mutation can have different effects on this sentence made up of three letter words. So we have the fat cat ate the rat. If I verbally tell you that, you know that this cat consumed this rat. But what if I cause a mutation? What if I cause this C to change to a K? And I read this sentence to you, the fat cat ate the rat. It still has the same meaning. So if I tell you that sentence, it still means the same thing. And we would call that a silent mutation. There was no change to the protein. The definition or the meaning of that sentence did not change. So this would be a silent mutation. Now, what if I change the fat cat ate the rat to the fat bat ate the rat? Now, the meaning of that sentence has changed. It has been altered. And we would call that a missense uh, mutation because the protein was altered. The mutation did have an effect on the protein. It was changed with another amino acid. If I say the fat cat ate the rat and the mutation causes it to say the fat cat, and then it stops. That would be nonsense mutation. The protein stopped early. It never finished being made. Okay? So those are the three types of point mutations. Now let's take a look at frame shift. And a frame shift is much more detrimental because like the word sounds, everything after the mutation is shifted over to the left or to the right. So we have insertions where one base is added and we have deletion where one base is missing or deleted. Now, if we take out a base, the ribosome is still going to read the RNA in triplets. It's still going to read it in codons. So you'll see what this looks like in just a moment. Go ahead and take note of that slide, that last little sentence right there, please. Okay, so frame shift. If I change the fat cat eat the rat to the fat Tuka tat f era t. That makes absolutely no sense. But if I identify where the mutation was, there was an insertion. I added in one T. I added in one base. And since the ribosomes read every three letters and everything was shifted over, nothing makes sense after that mutation. So this would be a frame shift insertion. Everything after that mutation shifted over to the right. Now, if I were to look at this, I could easily identify that it's an insertion because I have one extra base at the end. I have that T at the end. Okay? So I could easily identify that as an insertion. Let's take a look at a deletion. The fat cat ate the rat turns to the fat atta tet her at. Well, what happened there? I took that C away. I took out that one base and that caused everything to shift to the left. And everything after that mutation makes absolutely no sense. So this would be a frame shift mutation deletion. One base was deleted. Let's see what this actually looks like um, in a strand of DNA. So I'm going to use this as my reference. This is going to be my original strand of DNA. Now, if there is a mutation, and let's say I change this adenine to a thymine, you can see that changes the RNA sequence, and then that will actually change, in this case, the amino acid. This would be a point mutation missense because that asparagine used to be a tyrosine. Okay? So there was a change and it was only in one base. Let's say I have the mutation and I change that G, that guanine to a thymine, and eventually that tells the protein to stop early, well then that would be a point mutation nonsense because the protein never finished being made. What if we were to have this cytosine mutate into a guanine and we still end up with proline. We still have the same amino acid, proline. 
that would still be a mutation because there was a change in DNA. However, I would call that a silent mutation because it had no effect on the protein. Both, both uh, codons code for proline, so there was no effect. How about this one? What if I insert what if I insert one nucleotide right here and causes everything to shift over to the right? Again, how do I know that it's insertion? Well, if I look at the sequence to the far right, I see there's one base extra. So I know that there's one added in. Now, everything after that mutation has changed with the exception of this proline, whoops, with the exception of proline, and that's just by coincidence. But everything after that has been altered. That would be a frame shift insertion. How about this one where I deleted a nucleotide? <clears throat> that would be a frame shift deletion. How do I know just by looking at this DNA sequence that it's deleted? Well, there should be three letters here, but there's only two. So I know that one was taken away. One was deleted because there's only two letters at the end. Um, also, Every amino acid after that mutation was altered. So I know that this is a frame shift and it's much more detrimental. So let's do a quick recap. Uh, mutations in gametes versus somatic cells. Mutations in gametes are passed on to offspring. Somatic cells are not. Sometimes mutations um, in sex cells can be beneficial. They can increase variation, but a lot of the time they're neutral or deleterious. They, they, they're harmful. In somatic cells, it could lose the cell to, uh, it could cause the cell to lose its function, and a lot of mutations um, can drive the aging process. A point mutation is a single base changed. There's three types: silent, where there's no effect; missense, where there is an effect on the protein; and nonsense, where the protein never finishes being made; it stopped early. And then there's frame shift, where a base is added or deleted, and we describe those as insertion or deletion. The frame shift is by far a worse type of mutation than the point mutation. And that is it for mutations, folks, and I hope that was helpful. Catch you next time.